Our entrance hymn is 764, Rejoice, the Lord is King, 764. Pace e fedi, Spirito Santi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries as we celebrate this beautiful solemnity of Jesus Christ, King of the universe, let us together call to mind our sins and seek God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God. 
of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. I'm sorry, that's a wrong one. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. And days passed when Saul was our king. It was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commanders of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. A 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things, in heaven and on earth, the visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said to him, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. You, 
on the altar frontal, we see the Greek letters Alpha and Omega. The first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Alpha and the Omega. This weekend for us is a big weekend for us as a parish. As I mentioned in the opening introduction, this is the solemnity of Christ the King. But also at this Mass, we begin the 40 hours devotion. So this Mass, we open our Eucharistic devotions for the parish for today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. And I do invite you over the three days, we do have open hours to sign up for on the back table to sign up, spend time with Jesus. Spend some time with Jesus over the next three days. It's an opportunity for us to adore, an opportunity for us to worship, but also the opportunity for us to gather to bring our concerns, our needs, our joys, to bring everything before God. The word Eucharist, Eucharistia, means thanksgiving. And if we listen very closely, St. Paul began his letter to the Colossians today, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. To give thanks to God. And this is a perfect opportunity this week for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to give thanks to God. It's a big week, as I mentioned. Not only is the opportunity for us to adore our Eucharistic Lord present in the most blessed sacrament, but we also know what comes this week. Not a short week from school, not a short week from work, but more importantly, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Another day for you and me to give thanks to God. And I encourage you, on Thanksgiving Day, we'll be celebrating Mass at 9 a.m. Most of you be off. Come to church. Take a break from the preparation. And just come and worship the Lord. You know, you have plenty of opportunities to come to adore Jesus to pray. And we need to pray. We need to begin Thanksgiving Day giving thanks to God. Especially if we're going to have a crazy Thanksgiving dinner. I know how it can be when you invite all the relatives into the house. How sometimes it's a joyous occasion, but it can also be quite stressful. Come to the Lord in prayer. Take that opportunity to give thanks to the Father, who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. We heard in the first reading from the second book of Samuel, about King David and anointing him the king of Israel. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all anointed. Kings and queens, all anointed. Because in our baptism, we were anointed priests, prophet, and kings. So we're all royalty in the eyes of God. And God loves you and me so very much. So much so that in today's gospel from Luke, it takes us to the crucifixion as Jesus is hanging on the cross. We listen to what Jesus endured. The rulers sneered 
He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. One of the criminals. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. So three times Jesus endured the sneers and the jeers and being reviled by others. Imagine how Jesus felt on the cross. Remember, he was like us in all things but sin. He felt the nails pierce his hands. He felt the nails pierce his feet. He felt the lance pierce his side. Even though he expired, he felt that. He felt the crown of thorns being pierced into his skin. He felt it. And he felt the rejection. And then we have the good thief rebuking the other thief. Have you no fear of God? Have you no respect for God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed we have been condemned justly. So he's recognizing God and he's also recognizing the fairness of his sentence and that Jesus did nothing criminal. And Jesus experiencing all that pain looks up over to him when the thief says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And there's two phrases of strength there as Jesus hung on the cross. Amen, I say to you. And you may recall when I say, when Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, that means listen up. Snap into it. What I'm saying is very important. And then the other strong word is the T word today. You'll be with me in paradise. And Jesus continuously lays down his life for us on this altar. And he will reveal himself to us, open himself up to us, allowing us to adore him over the next three days. Today, and over the next several days, Jesus Christ will be king. Jesus Christ is the center of our parish life. Jesus Christ will be on the altar for you and me. For us to come and to worship. And that we are called to go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. This is a perfect opportunity to come rejoicing into God's house. To thank him for the many gifts and blessings he's given us. Now, the other masses I preach is, you know, we talk about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is king. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he shows us what it means for us to be Christians, that we're called to lay down our lives. He is a true servant king who embraced the cross. You know, that he embraced, now he has a crown of gold, but then he had a crown made of thorns. He shows us that we're called to love as he loved us. And that he embraces us as royalty. But Jesus Christ wants to be king in another area of our lives. Jesus Christ wants to be king of our hearts. He wants to dwell in our hearts. Is Jesus Christ the king of our lives? Or have we allowed other things to creep in? Jesus wants to be the king of our hearts. And you know, there's a, a correlation. We end the liturgical year 
on the Feast of Christ the King, and we begin a new liturgical year next week in Advent, preparing for the newborn king. So next week we begin Advent. In this Advent I have a theme. Prepare the room. Prepare the room. Now I'm not talking about preparing a nursery or a, a single purpose, like a room, a specific room. Although I may use that as an example because I can tie some things into it. But prepare the room is ultimately about preparing our hearts. You know, it's the one thing sometimes we miss. It's very easy to think that our faith is a list of rules, a list of precepts. But more importantly, yes, with our faith comes responsibilities. And yes, God does give us the Ten Commandments to follow. He demonstrates the corporal and the spiritual works of mercy, the Beatitudes. And so we are responsible. But our responsibilities help build more importantly, a relationship. And the most important relationship in our lives, our relationship with God. It builds and sustains our relationship with him. And so we need to make room in our hearts for him. We need to welcome him into our lives. And not only do we welcome God into our lives individually, but then we welcome God into our families. It begins with you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, welcoming Christ into our hearts. And then our families. Then our communities. And ultimately then into the world. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come to him, my dear brothers and sisters. As king, he provides for our every needs. Yes, sometimes life is difficult and challenging. We experience bumps in the roads. But God gives us the tools that we need. In the next three days, in this next week, is a perfect opportunity. The world can give us things that will dissolve, disappear, fall apart. But what God can provide you and me never fades, never falls apart. He gives us what we need. His kingdom endures forever. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today the Lord remembers us, and he wants us to respond today, to not miss a beat. If you need encouragement, just remember, we are his anointed. He loves us. And he hands himself over to us time and time again, every single time we gather here. God does not disappoint. And as king, as true king, he provides us all that we ever need.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life for the world to come. Amen. Our King reigns from his cross. He reigns in his eternal kingdom, where he intercedes for us. Through our loving Redeemer, let us make our prayers of intercession. For the Church, the body of Christ, that its royal head may draw all believers into the visible unity of the one body, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all who exercise authority in our world today, that they may learn from the King who came to suffer and serve, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all prisoners of conscious, consciousness, that they may remain firm amidst suffering, inspired by Christ, who was unjustly condemned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For hope in the future, that we may look forward to the final triumph of the reign of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are struggling with infirmities and those who care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those visiting our parish this weekend for Mass and for those who will stop and pray before the Blessed Sacrament during our 40 hours devotion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed from death, that Christ who forgave the good thief may welcome them into paradise, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered for all souls, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, grant our petitions, for you have called us out of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn at the preparation of the gifts will be 751, Crown Him with Many Crowns, 751.
through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I present you the offerings and sacrifices of your chosen people. and cleanse me from my many sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and the King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, 
a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Corneus, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us in this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners. Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. For John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away 
the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for eternal life. My soul safe for your life. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 858, The King of Love, 858. The Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
body of Christ. May the Lord bless you both, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray.
Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in this heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of things, Lord, with your permission. Um, the turkey dinner is happening today, um, and also the thrift shop is open as well during the hours. And also the sign-up sheets, as I mentioned, are in the back of church. And I invite everyone to join us on Thanksgiving Day for the celebration of Thanksgiving. And Mass that day will be offered at 9 a.m. Please kneel. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to take this opportunity to spend a few minutes of thanking God for the gifts and blessings of the Most Holy Eucharist. I will be processing out just to the sacristy, and I invite you as you leave church today, out of respect for those wishing to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, to foster a spirit of silence and withhold all, all conversations until um, you're out of the church. And I thank you very much for your cooperation and I thank you for all you do as we gather to thank Jesus for the tremendous opportunity to adore and worship him.